Hey guys, welcome to another YouTube video. We had a little bit of a lapse there, but we're back. And we have a very unusual chair. I've been upholstering over 40 years, and I've never seen a ribbon chair. And uh, we, we got this because uh, one of our, our customers saw us on YouTube upholstering a womb chair, and he felt like uh, if I could do a womb chair, that I can do his ribbon chair because he hadn't found anybody that he could trust with his ribbon chair from the Netherlands. And so when I look at this, I'm, I'm saying to myself, what have I done? I took this job, but I know I can do it as long as the fabric he picks is a stretchy fabric. This fabric that's on here now is a really stretchy four-way fabric. I think it's like a dressmaker's fabric that, uh, but he wants an, a, a more of an upholstery fabric, which is, you know, uh, as long as it has some stretch on it, I guess it's going to be okay. But uh, I am a little concerned about it. I And if you've seen the womb chair video, you know that even every womb chair, I think I mentioned this, every womb chair that I get into the shop, I look at it and say, that's impossible. And then I do it and it's fine. But I, I look at this chair and I say the same thing. Uh, but what's important on this chair is because it's been engineered so well. I mean, that's one advantage I have. I, I know that the patterns, that this is definitely a pattern chair. I'm going to use the pattern on this chair. I'm going to take it apart. Today we're going to start to take it apart. But before we do that, we're going to do some labeling on it. Um, I mean, gr pictures are great, but they don't always tell the whole story. Uh, video, video graph, video uh, a, a project is great, but they don't always tell the story. What I mean by that is we still need to use some traditional methods even on a modern piece like this before you attempt it. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some labeling. It might look a little silly to you. It might look a little obvious, but I'm going to do it anyhow because uh, once this is taken apart, I don't want to have any questions about what, what goes where. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some labeling. And what I mean by that is I'm going to take my chalk. So guys, we have seams underneath the arm. We have seams running around the seat here. We have Nope, a seam on the back. It's actually hand stitched on the back, which I actually looked at that and I said, "Good," because I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't want all of this as one piece and then try to upholster it. I like the idea that it's hands. Even they had to hand stitch it. Um, so hand stitching it gives you a little bit of some freeway, uh, some free. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> a little bit of relief that it's not all fitted. Let's put it that way. You have some play there. So but before I, I, I get on, I'm gonna I'm gonna put left, left. I'm gonna I'm gonna tip this to you guys. Hold on a second. Left seat, front, F. I'll, I'll say. Okay. And then right seat, seat, front F. Okay. Indicating F. Indicating F. This is important. Over describing is better than under describing, and it's to, it's to what, whatever you're used to. If you've been upholstering for a while, some people might be okay with just putting an SF there, seat front. They know what it means. But I like to really, and then I, they won't even put left and right. They wouldn't distinguish from. They probably think that's too obvious. Listen, over description is better than an under description in my book, especially something that I'm, I've never done it before. I, wanna, I don't want to take any chances. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put up here. Uh, inside back, I can abbreviate that, IB, top. Notice where I am on this, I'm in the center. You know, I'm in the center of the inside back. That's, I'm not writing over here. So, so right? So I got that. I'm going to turn the chair around. This hand stitch right here, I recognize that as a hand stitch, right? That's, and when I saw this, hadn't seen that before, I was happy to see that. Because <laughs> that means that I can pull my cover a little bit, work it underneath this, and then this is the last thing that gets put on. So I'm going to write, sorry, let's tip this up for you to see. OB, outside, back, top. Put a little T there. Why does he do that? Why does he, why does he write top? Sometimes I just put a T. Again, I, I don't want to take any chances that I can turn this around, okay, when I'm ready. It's not going to come off, so I'm going to explore inside here a little bit to see. This is part of the seat right here. So I already have my seat marked front, but you see how the seat comes through here, there's a seam here, and it comes all the way out here. Very unusual chair. 
And I'm looking at it going, what have I got myself into here? But you're going to see it, and you're going to see the whole thing made. So we're committed. We've been commissioned, so I'm committed to this piece. So that's my outside. That's my outside. Hold on a second. This is my inside back. Comes around. Comes around all the way down. Look at this, guys. My inside. <laughs> Without a seam. How is that possible? Side back, so that you know what that means, don't you guys? That you would better not have something with a padded in so it. So my inside back is mocked, but my inside back, just to show you, it goes all the way. It sweeps down all the way to the bottom right to here. That's my inside back. Um, I don't think I'm going to make any other reference on that. So I think I've got all my labeling done. This is pretty exciting, though. Um, when I feel my hand in here, so what I'm trying to do, before I take it apart, I'm just trying to get into the chair. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to understand how they did this. I'm looking for any other seams to make sure I didn't miss anything. So um, my seat goes all the way in here and comes up here and it's seamed here. And there's a seam here and there's a seam back here. That's my left seat. And I have a, so I have a left seat, I have a right seat, I have an inside back. And the inside back goes all the way, does covers all of this, and then I have an outside back. So I have one, two, three, four sections of this chair, which is really interesting. I thought there was going to be a lot more than that when I first looked at it, but there's four pieces of fabric that are going to be stitched and hand stitched on. So I'm, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm, this is the process I use. I, the only difference is I'm verbalizing it for you guys. But if I was, uh, obviously I'm not going to be talking to myself, although I don't think there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> all right, so I got it all labeled. Uh, my next step now is to take it apart, okay? So this can also be um, really tricky unless you really mock things. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to tip this over. I'm going to mock the base because there's two ways this base could go on. I want to make sure it goes on the right way. There's no indication of front and back on this base, except for me now that I'm going to put this on. I'm just going to, with pencil, pencil you guys, not pen, I'm going to put front F. That's all he needs, an F right there for front. Why do I use a pencil, not a pen? Because I, I don't want, I want to erase that eventually. That, that I don't want to introduce any of my labeling onto something that means a lot to the customer. All used, interested. Labeling is great. Oftentimes we don't see labels. This is um, Artefort, made in the Netherlands. Artefort's the name of the brand, designed by Pierre Paulin. So, never seen one, 40 years upholstery, never seen one. Okay, now, now we have to explore how to take this apart. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, the, the easiest thing to do first and I want to admit to you guys that I did start taking a little bit apart because I didn't know what tool I was going to need. Okay, so that's why I did that. So the, the easiest thing to do is to start removing your hand stitching, right? And so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm just going to, and then my, my I'm going to redo, take this off, and then my next uh, approach is going to be to take the base off. And I notice something that's a little bit disheartening is that some of this stuff's coming apart but okay so what you have to do when you get commissioned on a piece like this you have to make sure you tell people you have to use as much of the original material as I can so I'm already I'm already guessing that what I'm going to do is I'm going to just peel I'm going to do this by hand I'm going to take all the loose particles off I may or may not I may not be able to put padding on it or batting but I have to take as much of this off and clean it up as much as I can. I'll vacuum it out and get it back to the form. This is form fitting, so I, ca I cannot duplicate this and I cannot add too much to this. If anything, I might not add anything, I'm not sure yet. But that's just the nature of this. There's no way that I can duplicate the form on this, which is done by, you know, mold. They have, they have a uh, mold. Is that the word I'm going to put? Mold. Um, they pour it in, and there's no way any professional upholsterer that I know, custom upholsterer, that has the means to do that. It's the same thing with, you know, any type of mid-century furniture. I think I might be able to just cut this right off. Look at that. 
That's pretty good. I don't want to rip it, but the, this is this is old. It's got some age to it. The stitching is just falling apart on me, so that's a blessing. Now look, I'm confident. Not only I want to just mention, do I have this mark? It also indicates what side that is. So obviously the outside back top, that's the face. So there's no confusing. Once this was removed, there's no, um, I'm not going to get this mixed up for anything else other than what it is and, the, and which side it is. So that's, the, that's another mode for labeling everything. You're not going to be putting it on, you're not going to be taking your patterns backwards. That's, that's important to know. This is in excellent shape, this part. That might just help it along a little bit with what we're doing hand stitching. It's all new to me, you guys. I'm just trying to use my other things that I've done, and I'm trying to apply that to this new new thing that I'm doing here. One thing that hasn't changed is the hand stitch. That's still the same as it was 200, 300 years ago or longer. Isn't that interesting? You got you got a hand stitch in here that's been used for hundreds of years on a piece that's modern. I love that. I love the, I love mixing up uh, the tradition with the... Okay, so I'll take it to that point. Okay, I can't do anything else just to show you. Uh, I'm going to undo a couple of stitchings underneath here a little bit just to see. Okay, we got a little bit more done. Okay. And the rest of this is glued underneath there, but we need to take the base off in order to see that. I want to be able to see that way. I could take a little bit of this off. So this is interesting. I don't know if you can get in here. So there's no way, I just, just because I, I have to go through this process, because I have to put it back together again, but I just want to point something out here. The hand stitching begins right here. Why is that? Because the base had to go on at this point. Okay, we're going to be removing it. Base had to go on, and what they did was this part, there's no way they could get, it looks like there's blood in here too, by the way. It's not my blood, is it? This is interesting. <laughs> I'll show you guys this just, just because. There's blood, it, it looks like blood, and it looks like it might have been from whoever did it the last time. Um, it, that's interesting, but it's probably because uh, they, they got themselves with the needle in here, because they try to get a stitch, try to get a stitch as far down as possible, but you can't get it underneath here. So what they did was they glued, watch how easy it is for me to pull this through. See, that's glued, it's not stitched. So there's glue adhesive that's used in this point. So I'm still removing the, the outside back. Hold on a second. go to the other side, remove it to the same point, which is just pulling that off. Now I think I'm ready, um, I don't want to strip any more of this until I take the base off. I'm ready to take the base off. So what I see are big screws in here, regular screws. I'm going to take my modern iPhone and I'm going to use my camera to undo, there's a metal plate in here, and there's screws holding it on. Let's just see what happens when I remove. Ooh, these are big long screws, man. I didn't want these to come undone. Hope these come out good. And they're bolted on the other side. They go, the, the screws run through the whole base and they're bolted on the other side. I'm going to hold the bolt. I actually can hold it, believe it or not. I 
has to come off. What I'd like to show you, if I'm not boring you to death, is I want to show you the three, three screws right here. They're actually bolts. And on the other side, I want to show you the bolts. And then we're going to cut, and I'm going to get all these off. So I just, I just wanted to show you in a close-up. So the bolts go through. Um, there's a nut here that I have to hold and screw it off at the same time. And there are three of them, and they're really long, and they're really tough to do. So we're going to cut, and when, I, when we come back, it'll be loose, hopefully. Okay guys, so I have the three bolts, it's held on by three bolts on the base after we took the hand stitching away to discover. There they are right there. You want to obviously save the hardware, that's important. Um, it goes back where they're supposed to go. Uh, let's see if that did the trick. This should come right off. Look at that, huh? Now, why did he mark the front? Because one week, two week, three week, four week, five week, six weeks down the road, and I pick it up. I want to make sure that I know the front. Look at there's really no other way of telling. As a matter of fact, uh, the labeling is almost upside down from the front, so you could easily put this on the front. It makes a difference because I don't think those holes are even. See, this got a slant right here. So you might have been able to reason the slant. Usually it slants back, but who knows? I've never done one before. It's always better to mark. Overmarking, like I said, is better. So let's put this aside. Now, let's see if we can remove the rest of the cover. We all have it labeled, so we should be okay. I, I want to continue with my, if there's any more hand stitching that has to be undone, I want to continue with that. I just wanted to show you the bottom now. We, this is a view that we wouldn't be able to get unless we took the base off. So you can see it was hands, it was glued at the bottom. So I'm going to remove a little bit more of the glue, and again, a little bit of a hand stitch there, but then you're into the machine stitching, okay? Remove this, remove this. Now let's see if we can take the rest of this off. Let's put it back up. I want to see what's going on in the back and how they have this. This is glued on the back, see? So we have to remove the glue here. Let's pull it back to you guys. And there we go. We undid the whole thing without ripping anything, which is really good. So the next step is going to be to separate the machine stitches, but that's going to be for the next time. So I feel as though we got a lot of work done in this. Um, I'm, I'm starting to, in, in dissembling it, I'm, I'm understanding a little bit better how they did it. Because when you first look at this, it's a real mystery. And that's what makes it an interesting piece. I, I consider this really high art, actually, piece. And believe it or not, I've sat on this, it's actually very comfortable, too. I won't tell you why the design is comfortable, but... Uh, you probably can figure that out on your own. <laughs> we'll see you next time.